Hello and welcome to your daily dose of commentary. Today we start with the topic, GT Wiki removes private info about Rockstar employees. So I only caught this before I went live. So there might be small details that I don't know. But you guys of course likely know of GTA Wiki, which has a, a I guess just a bunch of information about GTA on it. I've referenced it as uh, sometimes inaccurate, but it does have a lot of information on it and I do reference it if I want to look something up quickly because it's usually accurate. A lot of effort has gone into all this stuff. But recently they released a statement in regards to some information that they had on the website. A statement from GTA Wiki. In response to recent privacy concerns raised by several Rockstar Games employees, GTA Wiki staff have taken immediate action to address the matter and ensure the protection of individuals' personal information. The controversy centered around the presence of personal details on articles dedicated to the individual. Acknowledging the significance of maintaining the privacy of all individuals, especially those who have contributed to the gaming industry, GTA Wiki has cooperated closely with the Wiki hosting platform, Fandom, to address the issue. Effective immediately, all potentially sensitive information about Rockstar Games employees has been removed. This includes details such as employment history and any images of said employees. The collective decision to carry out this action underscores GTA Wiki's commitments to upholding privacy rights and maintaining a responsible and respectful online environment. As we move forward, GTA Wiki will continue to uphold a high standard of privacy and data protection. Efforts will be made to prevent similar occurrences in the future and to maintain a safe and informative platform for all users. GT Wiki expresses its gratitude to the Rockstar Games team for their understanding and support during this period of adjustment. The reason why this was of relevance to me is because there was a fandom page, not on the GTA Wiki, but it's same company or whatever, that had my address on it for a long time. I think I've mentioned this before and my mother found it. She's like, why is your address on it? I'm like, oh my God. It wasn't in like its own section or whatever, but it was like in the, in, in the references or whatever, which made it so people could catch it. I got rid of it. I got rid of all the Wayback Machine stuff that shows it. And it was a huge pain to take down. I'm not sure how many people saw it, but my address is out there in the ether and that sucks. But like, this is kind of like the, just a negative consequence of a truly wondrous career in being a public figure in, on YouTube and Twitch, right? Uh, I, I, get, I get paid very well. I have a lot of perks and benefits from being in the public eye, even if there are obvious downsides. But imagine people who are just regular people working for a company, their being a public figure would get them nothing. Their private information being on this website would get them nothing, you know? If you're a regular person, why would you want that kind of attention? You get, there's like no upside to that. There are many upsides to me being a public figure and people caring about information about me, but none for the a regular Joe. So I can totally understand why these people would be like, yo, get this fucking information off there, what the hell? No harm was done to me so far. Uh, I was killed a week ago, but thankfully I got better. Some people just don't have boundaries, chat. Maybe there's some people like people's privacy isn't worth maintaining in the face of like keeping accurate records of everything that's going on. Cause so much of what goes on gets lost. So much isn't archived. They say the internet never forgets, but that's so not true. The internet does forget. This is the reason why Mr. Beast is in a league of his own. I saw someone on Twitter say that you can tell when Mr. Beast releases a video because you can see in your back end, your views will go down at that time because he just gets that many views at once. And I was like, can that really be true? I have no way of checking that because I just, I never am around when he happens to release a video. The dude is now getting over a billion views a month. And you can probably see that like, it seems very believable to me, right? As we always talk about, there's only a finite amount of videos that a person can watch in a month. And there's 2 billion active users who use the website or whatever. Like how large can Mr. Beast get before like, you will legitimately be able to see everyone on the platform a dip as people actively watch his video that comes out, you know? That's not me hating on his success. I just think it's an interesting phenomenon. And I would like to test that theory if I can actually see my back end if it dips. But it says here he got 8 million subs over the last 30 days and 1.5 billion views over the last 30 days. So he, in what, like four days or something, gets as many subs as I have for my entire channel. How? One of the significant things driving this growth is that each of his videos are now being served to all language demographics. So he's in the Arabic, Hindi, Korean, French, Bangla. What's that from Bangladesh or something? I, I, I know languages chat. Spanish, Vietnamese, Thai, Russian, Portuguese, Turkish, Indonesian, and English. So there's 13 different markets, 13 different avenues for growth. And this is dubbed professionally. And he's got subtitles in even more languages as well. There's 18 languages worth of subtitles. Why dislike though? I, I assume I bumped it when I was clicking share. 
Okay, I have, I have no idea. I, I, I swear I didn't dislike the video. I promise you. I, I don't know how that happened. I'm not hating on Mr. Beast. Please don't. Please don't hate me. <laughs> it's just a smart move when you're trying to be more successful to look at the people who are being more successful and seeing what kind of strategies they have that you can emulate. And I, my content is just so different from what Mr. Beast makes that I just can't do it. And it sucks. It's very frustrating. And then my ability to like dub all my videos into different languages is effectively non-existent. Like you guys wouldn't want me to become Mr. Beast and I wouldn't want to become Mr. Beast either. What he does content wise is not really appealing to me. Like it wouldn't satisfy me. But there are certainly aspects of what he does that I would be cool having. Like if I had a team of people dubbing my videos, but would I be okay with that? Because obviously I I'm not mindlessly pursuing success here and growth. I suppose what I'm looking for is avenues for growth that I'm comfortable with and that will fill me with satisfaction. Not necessarily just growth for growth's sake, you know? You dub it into English for me, so I can have two languages, Australian and English. I think he has shorts on his channel that have more views than my entire channel. So this short here has 819 million views. This one has 887 million. And my entire channel is like 800 million. A lot of it though, is definitely that his channel gets more credibility in the algorithm than other similar types of content, right? Because it's just so broadly appealing. Like anyone who is new to the platform, will immediately be shown a Mr. Beast video and it will take quite a while for everyone, for a person to be on the platform long enough for their tastes to be so readily understood that they'd be shown my con my content, right? But that's the advantage of being broadly appealing, you know? Man has mastered the game of YouTube. The ceiling for what he creates is the highest ceiling that exists of any type of content. We've talked about this before because it's spectacle content. And because he's so far up there already, he has resources at his fingertips that no one else does. A lot of what makes you successful on YouTube is finding some niche, a type of content that has an audience that is not being satiated currently by other people in the market and then attempting to fill, fulfill that, you know, in that kind of spectacle, money kind of content because no one else has that many as much resources. Like, I'll be honest with you. I don't love Mr. Beast content. I swear to you, I did not dislike this video in in intentionally. I swear to you. Like, I I'd admit to it. Like, I, I, like I'll click this one, I, I see. See this one I haven't disliked, haven't disliked this, but I watched this video and like five minutes into it, I got bored of it. One dollar versus $250,000 vacation. This is not the sort of content that appeals to me. It just felt so pointless. It was just a bunch of people jumping between different locations, seeing things that if you're there at the time would be cool to see, but watching someone else see those things, is just like, you know? Again, not hating on people for wa watching this content. I've watched other videos he's made that are perfectly fine. It just, it's just not the best content for me, you know? It's broadly appealing, but it's obviously not gonna be to everyone's taste or everyone's favorite kind of content. But his newest video I've, he released, I got like two minutes in here and I felt really uncomfortable. I, I don't like this idea of a bunch of people, not necessarily in very good circumstances, all struggling and fighting to win money. It just feels so depressing. Like, I just feel bad for everyone involved. And I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, all the people who, like... Like, you see some people trip over at the start here. Like, some people trip over. Like, they, they trip over each other. And I just think to myself, like, how bad would you feel, like, for the rest of your life? <laughs> and that's all I can think about. It, and it just sours the experience for me. I'm sure they get something. It's it just... I, I, like, I just don't like to think about this stuff. Mr. Beast and his content is just a very interesting phenomenon to look at and talk about. It's no different from, like, Takeshi's Castle. Yeah, I guess not. But I mean, I wasn't super into Takeshi's Castle either. And those were kind of like funny. Like, like you know, Wipeout? That's another one kind of thing. This video did cause a little bit of controversy though, because it's titled Every Country on Earth Fights for $250,000. And so he had to draw a line on what places are countries and which aren't. This video is a little bit out of date now, but I'm sure you've seen it. It came out like 10 years ago now. Holy shit, this video came out 10 years ago. It's called How Many Countries Are There? And the answer to that question is somewhere in the range of 200. But there are many different places that different governments don't accept are actually countries. Taiwan being a big example of that. And Taiwan wasn't counted as a country in the Mr. Beast video. I'm sure they must have sat around and thought about that, you know? The reason why my GTA All Awards video was delayed. So I didn't think my All Awards series was going to be all that important, right? But I ended up dedicating myself to it quite a lot over these past couple of months. And the last episode came out two months ago. The person who I gave episode one to, it was a risk. They're young, 
but it looked like they had some energy to their edits. So I was like, even though I had to spend days polishing that thing to make it good, I was like, look, I'll take you know, I'll take a chance. You can take my feedback and you can uh, make the next episode better. Two fucking months. They've finally given me the edit. I spent six hours on it today and I'm only halfway through it. I think it was originally like a 25 minute video or something. It's just so subpar. I took a gamble on giving this person another job and there's at least some evidence that halfway through it, they were like, eh, I can't bother doing these things anymore. Like they do, they like track me reading a word, reading words on the, in the uh, awards. And then halfway through the other, they just gave up and couldn't be fucked doing it anymore. I like, I understand they don't get paid less if I spend, you know, have to spend four days polishing an edit, right? It, it just, it just eats my days. So of the 17 minutes of their edit, my recut of it is nine minutes. I basically cut it in half. It's just very frustrating because there's so many other things I could be working on and doing. And I've waited two months for this. Like, they're new, right? If it had been an edit done in a week, two weeks, sank, and I have to spend this much time, I'd be more forgiving. But two months for this? Is the video that short? No, the, the, the whole video, at least their edit of it, was 26 minutes. But again, it's taken like 10 hours to go through half of it. Because it's, it's editing. You, know, you guys don't understand. Editing is just such a slow, meticulous process. I am a super fast editor, chat. But sometimes undoing things and fixing edit can be very tedious when it's when it's done so poorly. You get two months for how how much was the original footage? Like, it does not take two months to process five hours of footage. I could process five hours of footage in like three days. I gambled and lost, chat, and that's all there is to it. This video will be done today, and it will come out. It's a lot of it is largely just cutting for time, presenting things more efficiently. One thing though is redundant speech is an important thing to understand in editing. Show don't tell. Like during a stream, I'll be like, guys, this is the last one. And then I will kill someone and then an award will pop up showing that it was the last one. You've got me saying it's the last one and showing it's the last one. You don't need both. You can just remove me saying this is the last one, guys. Unless that's particularly interesting in some way and you can just keep the other half. like. Even after all this though, I considered giving him another one just because there's so much all awards footage to go through, but it, it's just that bad. I can't, I, like I'm, I'd be better off doing it myself. Maybe not, maybe not going that far. Obviously still having another person go through it helps. Assuming they didn't skip over important footage, but I, I assume they didn't because they kept him more than they should have. A lot of the problem is that the all awards footage, well, is often not all that interesting, right? It's grinding a random achievement for half an hour or something. So you've got to really pick up the pace so people don't get bored. <laughs> I've become a TikTok sensation. So on TikTok, a meme of me blew up. Like it got, what, like 3 million views or something? 333,000 likes. Wasn't from me though. It was uh, from the Mr. Phillips channel. This is a channel that largely is just memes of me with text on top of it. I think it's had a handful of fairly successful ones. I've talked about it in rambles before, but this, as far as I'm aware, is the most popular one they've ever done, but they produced a lot of memes here. Like, how many memes are here? Like hundreds? Are these all their own original memes? This is honestly pretty flattering. <laughs> all those TikToks are cringe, just edgy jokes. Okay, yeah, some of them are quite edgy, but this one isn't. Like, I have to try and describe this for the audio listeners as well. <laughs> does it, does it auto scroll? So on TikTok right now, there is this meme where, how do you, how do you describe it? Two pictures of someone just not responding to a new bit of information. And then like a third bit of information responding in an unexpected way. Does anyone know what this meme is called? So it's a picture of me in that weird picture of me with all my hair spiked up or whatever. And it says, there will be alcohol, no response. Same picture, there will be drugs, no response. And then me looking all swag or whatever, and it says there will be Pepsi Max. That's the joke. But what I liked about it was all the comments are really, really wholesome. Certainly a lot of people here are just being like, yeah, man, I love Pepsi Max. Pepsi Max is great. Pepsi Max is literally the greatest drink ever created. But like my first time seeing him without a tank top, like there's a, there's a lot of people here who are like, hey, it's, it's a Dark Vapor AU guy. We love Dark Vapor appreciation. Some people, like, like there might be like 10 comments here of people who don't like me like this. So we love Dark Vapor appreciation and this Riley person. We really don't. Guys are staying on Australia. Lanky twit. No, we don't. 
he has anger issues that he refuses to, store, to sort out. Like, those are like the only two negative comments. How can the hair even get like that? Meth and Pepsi Max addiction. <laughs> uh, there's just so many people who are just adding their friends being like, this is so you. I like it. I think the Pepsi Max thing probably made it uh, go more viral than me being there, but whatever. These are my favorite types of jokes. So I made an amazing joke on Twitter yesterday and it went entirely unappreciated. So Dexerto reports that ex-CEO Linda Yukarnio says an alternative to the block feature will be available. So Linda here, our user safety on X is our number one priority and we're building something better than the current state of block and mute. Please keep the feedback coming. My response to this was, why is the former CEO of Twitter commenting about implementing new features? This joke went over so many people's heads, but she's being labeled as the ex-CEO. But of course, Twitter has formally changed its name to X. So she's the CEO of X, but it was written as the X CEO, which could be interpreted to be the former CEO. And so that's why I said, why is the former CEO of Twitter commenting about implementing new features? This joke was great. And like next to no, pe no one got it. Common matter funny. Some people got it. I just want to be appreciated, chat. Is that too much to ask? My jokes are hilarious. I saw a joke from Josh Strife Hayes about the removal or the potential removal rather of a block on Twitter. And he said this, Twitter will remove blocking. This means sorcery and dex builds are now meta. <laughs> That's a great joke. That's totally a kind of joke that I would make. I wish I made that joke. That's a great joke. I love jokes that largely rely on just taking a word and then substituting an alternate meaning for that word and just running with it, right? Terrible? It's not terrible. Great joke. YouTuber got betrayed by a friend, so he created a new channel. I wanted to know how many of you know who Pack God is? I do. I do not. So 27% of you do, 73% of you don't know him. I just got recommended this video where it's just him recording himself in like the lowest webcam quality I've ever seen. It's like a square resolution. What even is this? It was this like a four by three resolution or some shit. I understand this is not a square. This isn't a perfect square either, but it's not like a 16 by nine. This is like the lowest effort video I've ever goddamn seen. It, it's, it's, it's like 480p or something. It says 1080p, but it looks, it looks like mush. It's got 4.1 million views. So I was like, what the hell is this? It's titled, How My Best Friend Betrayed Me and Stole Three Years of My life, Life's Work. The story is basically that this dude, Pack God, and a dude named Leg both shared a channel at some point, coined Pack God. And it seems pretty obvious that Pack God did most of the work, but they split the revenue 50-50. And then Leg, I got, guess, got really greedy and just decided to, because he technically owned uh, the Gmail account or whatever, kicks Pack God out of all of it. So he would get all the money, that being Leg, Leg would get all the money. And this video has like overwhelmingly positive response, like 250,000 likes to 2.8K dislikes. But yeah, the video has 4.1 million views. And the thing that made him stand out to me the most is that this channel that he apparently made 11 months ago now has 3 million subscribers. As in, this dude got kicked out of his channel by his partner and he apparently built himself an entirely new channel in a year that's bigger than my own channel. And he's getting good views, like 20 million views a month or something. If you go to the original channel that he lost, Void I think it is, has been uploaded to in the last eight months, has 416,000 subscribers, and the dislikes on the most recent video are like 40,000 dislikes to 3,000 likes. So basically this, this leg dude apparently, seemingly had like a meal ticket in this packed god dude, and he ruined it because he got greedy. And everyone seems to collectively agree that he was just an asshole who fucked over this pack god guy. And this pack god apparently was actually talented, so just <laughs> made himself a sick channel. That's so cool. <laughs> Massive karma. One thing that made this video appeal to me when I first saw it is this dude looks like TG to me. Like, look at this. Look, look at this face. Doesn't he? At least a bit. Here comes Leg's first points onto why he stole everything from me. Starts with him saying that I'm very narcissistic, manipulative, and selfish. If you told me this was TGG from like a couple of years ago, I'm like, yeah, okay, this is one of TGG's first videos. <laughs> the hairstyle could definitely be carrying it a bit, but he does look like him. He looks like his brother. It's just weird, the, the sort of stuff that you two will recommend you. And I just found this story pretty funny. I was interested if I had just missed out on some really big drama that everyone else knew about. Stop! 
Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.